Welcome back. Well, some polling locations are now open in the state of New Hampshire. This is the first in the nation primary election kicking off this morning. Republican voters will have the choice between former President Donald Trump and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley. Both candidates making their final appeal to voters in rallies last night. Here's what President Trump said about Haley. Watch. The people behind Nikki are pro-amnesty. You like that? Pro-China, pro-open borders, pro-war, pro-deep state, and they're pro-Biden. Did you see where 50 percent of the people that voted for her in Iowa are going to vote for Biden? In other words, they're Democrats. They're voting. They're voting. Think of it. They're going to vote for Biden. They just had no choice, so they picked her. This is not what we want. Meanwhile, Nikki Haley called out the political elite and the media in her choice words for Donald Trump. Watch. I have watched the entire political elite yesterday and today. I've watched the entire media elite yesterday and today say that I should drop out for the good of the country to support Donald Trump. Joining me right now is OutKicks. Tommy Lahren is fearless host and Fox News contributor Tommy Lahren. Tommy, great to see you. Uh, what do you think as we uh, watch the opening of these polls in New Hampshire? What are you expecting? Well, I'm expecting Donald Trump to win New Hampshire. I'm expecting that Nikki Haley will likely do well in New Hampshire for a lot of reasons that are unique to New Hampshire and New Hampshire alone. I think that the spanking she received in Iowa should have been a clear signal to her. It was a clear signal to, signal to Governor Ron DeSantis. And I think that she should uh, actually get out of the race before it comes to South Carolina, her home state, because we wouldn't want to see her get spanked and embarrassed in her home state. That would be bad for her future political career, or whatever she wants to do after this. So I think that it's time that we rally around Donald Trump, as other candidates have done. It's time to unify the party, because we're going to have a lot of work to to do to defeat Joe Biden or whoever the Democrat nominee ends up being. So we better get to work now. The sooner, the better. Let's start making sure we're raising the money for Donald Trump and we're ready for that battle in November because it's not going to be an easy one and we have to have all of our eggs in one basket and ready to go. Well, you're right. A number of senators on the Republican side have now rallied around Donald Trump. In fact, he was joined on stage last night by some former opponents who now are endorsing him after dropping out of the race. That was South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, and Vivek Ramaswamy. Their appearance is meant to be seen as a, quote, show of force, that the Republican Party is united, ready to take on Joe Biden, uh, Tommy. But there's still some holdouts waiting to see what happens with Nikki Haley here. Is there a chance that Nikki Haley can loosen Trump's grip on this nomination? Possibly doing well in New Hampshire, but like I said, Maria, that, that doesn't mean really anything in the scope of things. And I think that it's time for Nikki Haley and other Republicans supporting her and other big donors supporting her to understand that, listen, the America First movement, the MAGA movement, the Donald Trump movement, whatever you want to call it, that is still very much the place we are in in the Republican Party. We are not going to go back to the days of the Mitt Romneys, the John McCains, the Nikki Haley type candidates. The American people, and particularly the conservatives, the America First voters out there, they want what a Donald Trump presidency gave them. They know what it looks like. They know that they were much better off four years ago, and they want that back. They don't trust the neocon types. They don't trust the Nikki Haley types. So while she might raise a lot of money, at the end of the day, people want Donald Trump. So it'd be good for her, for the sake of the party, the sake of the country, to quit maybe while she's ahead. She can go yeah. out with grace like Ron DeSantis did and look forward to whatever board she wants to sit on next. But this is Donald Trump's party right now, and that's uh, time to face that reality for Nikki Haley. Will Will he be facing off against Joe Biden? Over a year ago, I said there's no shot that Joe Biden is going to be the nominee on the Democrat side because I was looking at the mental capacity issues. We know he's not going to be on the New Hampshire primary ballot. After the Democrat National Committee changed the primary calendar this year, some voters say that they're going to write Biden in. Others are saying they're not happy with the DNC at all over blowing off uh, New Hampshire. Watch this. In New Hampshire, we take we take our civil responsibility very seriously, mm -hmm. and the primary is a huge event for us. So we were disappointed this year not to have the Democratic prim primary, and that's why we're doing this, mm -hmm. because it's not meaningless like the DNC says. Mm -hmm. it's, it really is meaningful. Uh, 
the Washington Examiner's Restoring America editor, Kaylee McGee, writes this. In New Hampshire, thousands of Democrat voters have switched their registration to become undeclared or independent voters in recent weeks because they don't want to vote for Biden. Even if they did, they would only be able to do so writing in Biden's name because the president has not even bothered to fight for the ballot access in the state. So, Tommy, two questions for you. Number one, your, your thoughts on the impact of Biden not being on the ballot here. And number two, will Biden be the one Trump faces off if it is, in fact, Trump in November? Well, there's been a lot of talk this election cycle about a coronation over a contest. And while some people might point that at Donald Trump, it's very much with Joe Biden. He, he doesn't want to debate. He doesn't want to engage. He really doesn't want to campaign at all. He goes and gives a couple minute speech and then he's on vacation or in the basement. But I'm not surprised because the more they put Joe Biden out there, the more of a liability they're going to have on their hands, which is why I maintain that come convention time, there's going to be a big upset. There's going to be a big change. I believe that Joe Biden will say for health reasons or otherwise, that he is stepping out of this race. And then I think that you're going to see California Governor Gavin Newsom sweep in there, maybe uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. But my money is still on Gavin Newsom. I don't think that they can run Joe Biden, not only because of the mental capacity, because of all the policy liabilities that he's brought forth for the fact of the economy, the open border, the poll numbers. Democrats don't want him. So I think even them pulling out the stops with this student loan forgiveness, trying to buy young votes, I still don't think they're going to feel confident running Joe Biden, even with all they have against Donald Trump. So I do believe there's going to be a new candidate in his place. So that's why Republicans, if they want to win, they have to spend also time talking about Democrat policies and not just Joe Biden, because if you remove mm. Joe Biden from the equation, you still have to tell voters why they don't want those Democrat policies yeah, that he's really point. just the puppet for. Yeah, it's a good point. But I mean, are they going to be able to blow off Kamala Harris and, and, and put in Gavin Newsom there? How are they going to deal with that? It's going to be tricky, but everybody has a price, even Kamala Harris. So I think that that will be a tricky one. Perhaps Michelle Obama could fill that spot because mm. she does fill the boxes that they need. But I yeah. still feel like it's going to be Gavin Newsom. I don't think Michelle wants it. Kamala will have a price. We're just going to have to see what that price is. Yeah, I wonder if it's the Supreme Court and they'll make her promises there. Cheryl, jump in. Well, I, hey, Tommy, it's great to see you at Cheryl Cassoni. I have to ask you, you know, you mentioned this, the student loan forgiveness disaster that President Biden is dealing with. Obviously, Kamala Harris this week is out at a bunch of college campuses trying to resuscitate that voter demographic. But I also want to ask you about another voter demographic, and that is white suburban women. That is who uh, President Trump had a problem with in 2020. What does that landscape look like now for him? in your opinion. Well, I'll tell you this, just a couple of weeks back during that uh, wonderful town hall event hosted by Fox News with Donald Trump, he was asked about the Roe v. Wade, the abortion question, and I thought he actually answered it very well. I think he came to the middle on the issue, and I think that issue above anything else is going to be the issue that a lot of suburban women are looking at, a lot of women in general are looking at, and maybe a lot of independents or maybe more moderate Democrats are going to be looking to. So if Donald Trump can keep his message to more of a centrist message on that issue, I think that he has a chance to win suburban women because while they care about that and that concerns them, they're also concerned about the border, they're concerned about the economy, they're concerned about their kids' schools. Right. So if he has not such a hardline approach on abortion, I think he's going to be okay on that issue. Well, he might surprise folks. You're right. No, I mean, look, you know, suburban women care about the things that everybody else cares about, security, national security and their own security. Uh, these are two issues that are paramount for, for Trump, uh, given his uh, history on the border and what he's done there. Tommy, we're going to keep following it, and we so appreciate you weighing in on all of that. Thanks very much for joining us this morning.